Okay, I started uh, recording the class and uh, we'll go to the question. So let me open my email. I think. So in the last class, I asked one of you, I think his name is Janathan, Janeshwaran, um, to send his uh, simulation file to me in order to check uh, and clarify his doubts. So he had a doubt about uh, the rise and fall time uh, in the CMOS inverter. And he had uh, forwarded his file to me. I think that this was not the updated file. So he forwarded another file to me. Let me quickly download that. And uh, this is the LT Spice file. Okay. Oh, download it. Anyways, I'll just download the update. Okay, uh, this is the uh, LT Spice simulation file that uh, the student has forwarded and asked about the question about rise time and fall time measurement. So let's look at the parameters. Uh, so he has he is using two transistors, 180 nano, two micron. So weight is two micron, and for the other transistor, 180 nano, four micron. Okay, so the question was about rise time and let's uh, read the question aloud so that everyone is aware of. So he has uh, done a simulation where the rise time was actually <clears throat> for the PMOS side and NMOS side had an issue. So this is the clarification. So I can forward this to you everyone, but it is, you, don't, you don't need to read the entire email. Just remember that what determines rise and fall time of a CMOS inverter. Okay, so uh, we will uh, simulate this. So uh, let's look at uh, the simulation parameters. Edit simulation column. Instead of 50, I'll just change it to simple two, two milliseconds. Okay. And uh, what else? I think nothing else. Uh, let's run this file and I'll click here and click here. So this is four micron and two micron width for the PMOS and NMOS respectively. So now if you want to measure the rise and the fall time, so for other students who don't know this, uh, so you can always go to view, uh, then view the log and from here you can find TR as the rise time and TF is the fall time, okay? And this rise and fall times are automatically measured by the software while considering some suitable points. So I am not sure whether this is 10% to 90%. See, by definition, what is the rise time? Rise time is the time uh, where a digital signal goes from 10% of the final value to 90% of the final value. Okay, so the time that it takes uh, between 10% to 90%, Basically, so that much time is your rise time, okay? And the fall time is just opposite. Uh, the time it takes from 90% of the final value. So this is the final value. So 90% to 10%. I think you must be remembering this definition. So uh, if you simply look at this green curve, so the green curve is the output uh, voltage, which is uh, at the node uh, between these two trains. And the blue is the ideal input uh, or basically the whatever input simulated input voltage, not ideal. Uh, now, by just looking at this green curve, look at the slope differences. First of all, this part, the rise part is not a straight line. It is rather a curvy kind of line with certain slope uh, at every instance. So its slope is not constant everywhere. Same thing over here, this is another falling kind of line where the voltage is falling from logic one to zero, whatever, 1.8 to zero volt. Uh, but again, it looks slightly different. If you just look at uh, the waveforms uh, visually, 
you can see the rise and fall are more or less matched but not exactly matched right in my eyes i get to see rise is faster and fall is relatively slower so by looking at uh, this view uh, spice log or error log you can find the rise is 4.2 uh, uh, 4.2 into 10 to the power minus 5 seconds and then tf is uh, 7.24 into 10 to the power minus 5 okay so now uh, i will stop the simulation i'll change the width so let's uh, remember the value so i'll make it 10 for the pmos okay so in mos again 2 and 180 uh for uh, pmos it is 10 and 180 okay 10 means the first digit represent width and second digit l in my statement okay so if you run the simulation again click at output and input if you look at it your rise has become faster okay so rise time is actually become smaller in fact and uh, just by looking at it we get to see this kind of information right and the fall time again it remains the same because we haven't changed the why the fall time doesn't change because uh, the fall time depends on the lower transistor which is in mos and the rise time depends on the upper transistor which is p mos so why rise time is dependent on upper transistor because the uh, current through which the output load capacitance is getting charged depends on the voltage uh, basically which is vdd and the voltage and then there is a resistance r on during the on state basically the while the mosfet is on so we call it r on of a mosfet so that r on in uh, which is actually charging this capacitor so this r on multiplied by the load capacitance value represents a time constant so that is a charging time constant so charging means from where it is rising basically while the voltage is rising at the output because this output green waveform is a voltage across the capacitor with respect to ground now while increasing the width of the pmos transistor what we are doing essentially we are reducing r on okay so but we haven't touched the nmos it is as it is so the fault time remains the same so fault time remains the same because while the capacitor discharges while the lower transistor is on at that time the capacitor discharges through nmos and while nmos is discharges so then nmos is also offering another r on so that r on into uh load capacitance is forming the discharging time constant okay so or while the falling action is happening but uh, from the previous case 4 micron to 10 micron i've just increased the width that means i have widened the size of the or basically increased the width of the transistor uh, pmos transistor so as a result r on decreased okay so now i will again uh, view the log if you look at the log uh, basically um, then look at this tr becomes 2.66 into 10 to the power minus 5 and uh, the tf remains the same as the previous one okay so from 4 uh, basically um, 4 into 10 to the power minus 5 we came to 2 into uh, 10 to the power minus 5 so we have reduced so likewise if you keep on uh, increasing the width of your transistor to let's say 20 micron even wider transistor so run the simulation uh, look at the plot it is become sharper and sharper right so the output uh, this one is sharper and sharper and if you give an sh even sharper input so that means the blue lines uh, fault time is even sh more abrupt in that case this will possibly become slightly uh, higher uh, slope will be observed so what we get to see the rise time is uh, different and it depends on the width of the pmos so we are only playing with this uh, this uh, side basically where the uh, green curve is going from 0 to logic 1 so the uh, question uh, now i can go to another extreme where uh, i am right clicking on this and then make it only 2 micron so that means width of the pmos is same as the width of nmos okay so both are 2 microns in that case uh, basically i can run the simulation look at this so your rise time is actually slower in fact it looks like slower but if you view the log 
it looks something strange so visually in my eyes i get to see this is actually slower as compared to this one but here in the automatic measurement it looks the same now i have uh, basically we have to uh, see where actually this time points exist so point 0058 so wherever is that point uh, with respect to uh, this uh, this one so now the point is it uh, this value whatever uh, it is taking as a rise time so it is actually considering somewhere over here so at startup so there are initial startup condition right so um, there is a initial condition so at, uh, at uh, before to start up we can assume that the system is actually in equilibrium state and uh, basically and it is uh, not initialized basically all nodes are not initialized so at that time so the rise time that this auto software automatically measures may actually may not be so reliable so my answer to this question the, he has asked uh, in the subsequent question uh, that uh, he has another doubt so while we change from w2 equal to 2 micro to w1 equal to 2 micro versus w2 equal to 10 and w1 equal to 2 so why the uh, fault times are actually doesn't change much okay so why and sometimes it is showing the same so it, in fact it is not the same if visually you can see that the rise time is slow and you should consider not somewhere over here next to time t equal to 0 millisecond and just afterwards rather you should consider the rise time you can manually measure from 10% wherever is that 10% 1.8 volt uh, to uh, this uh, sorry 0.18 volt uh, which is 10% and 0.18 minus uh, basically 1.8 minus 0.18 whatever the value so that point of whatever time you have to note at this point and you have to note the time at this point which is 10% and 90% respectively and then you can minus that uh, and then find that uh, rise time exact rise time so what i'm trying to say is that the software doesn't always give you the correct result unless you set the parameters where it is doing the measurement of rise time and fault time excuse me sir yeah tell me. sir uh, in this experiment only i had earlier tried to measure the rise and fall times in between like not at the end or not at the beginning but then also uh -huh. like the rise time was increasing on increasing the w value so i'm um, i i'm not sure if it's a fault of the lt spice or something else so if you increase the value of w for uh, this upper transistor which is pmos your rise time will definitely reduce okay yes, sir, it's and reduce yeah it must reduce and why it is uh, it must reduce so that is given i had shared one file with you i think or maybe i have uh, informed you over email so you have to look at this document where you can calculate the value of r on so i get to see it an equation of r on from this particular document although it is old but the theory doesn't uh, actually some basics doesn't change even if the size and all those parameters So R on is equal to one upon mu n C ox W by L into V C C minus V in minus V T. So V T is threshold, V in is input voltage, V C C is the supply voltage, length, width of the transistor, and oxide uh, capacitance in the gate area, and then uh, mobility for the in channel uh, carrier, which is electron. So by using this equation, if you increase uh, W, then your R on should in, uh, decrease. right and vice versa because it is one upon w so it is inversely proportional so increased w means decreased r on and vice versa and uh, there are other documents also i can uh, you can find through internet so there are tutorials uh, on analog switches and multiplexers although we are not doing analog switches as such but you can see uh, this curve so if you plot between the signal voltage versus r on then uh, look at the curves for nmos and pmos so they are actually different so uh, this intersection should be ideally somewhere on the y axis uh, over here but it is more aligned or basically shifted towards left so that is the problem so while you use uh, it as a uh, cmos inverter such as this circuit that you are simulating so we get and combine uh, combine transfer function as this one so combined transfer function as uh, basically 
this kind of thing for uh, on uh, so for this is basically for the transmission switch or basically uh, of a CMOS also same similar thing is happening because in Thevenin's equivalent mode VCS and VDD are short. Okay, and uh, that means the resistance between this point and this point between the source and drain. So they are both parallel to each other, basically, you can think. And in that case, your combined transfer function actually with respect to, uh, not uh, basically with just while plotting R on versus signal voltage is something like a uh, moon-like uh, partial arc-like shape for CMOS. So if you go for only NMOS logic, so this there will be little shift and also PMOS logic. By even you adjust the sizing, so there is a yeah, basically uh, unmatched uh, R-on characteristics over signal voltage. So CMOS by using the sizing and so on, so you can gradually try to adjust the middle of this curvy portion on the y-axis. That is the ultimate aim. Obviously, uh, that uh, exact signal voltage cannot be maintained all the time. So the problem is, so ideally, we want a flat straight line, horizontal line, okay, uh, which is uh, not so high in our own. So ideally, while the transistor is on fully in saturation region, so we need, uh, we expect the Aron to be as small as possible, but there is a limit because there's a channel and carriers. So it offers some resistance, finite resistance, but let that finite resistance be very small and you can make it smaller and smaller by increasing width. And also uh, you, you should want that this line to be exactly flat. Okay, the straight line, vertical, uh, horizontal straight line, uh, which should be very close to the uh, this X axis. But ideally, we don't get that. The signal voltage can change. Sometimes plus voltage, sometimes minus voltage, sometimes zero. It depends on which logic you are using or which analog circuit you are using. Uh, so based on that, uh, so the CMOS gives a much better characteristics as compared to Aron characteristics as compared to only NMOS and TMOS. Okay. So uh, this is uh, the reason why you get uh, basically this R on um, or the rise time and fall time different. Uh, and also how do you adjust that and how do you measure that? So you have to do all, take into consideration all these facts. Now in this uh, thing, if I, I have so far, I haven't changed the width of this one, right? The inmost side. So which is the fall side um, of the signal. So if I change the width, Mm, let's say I just arbitrarily choosing some value. Look at this. So it looks like it's almost okay. I can choose even larger width for NMOS. Okay. So by adjusting the width, if you need a symmetric rise and fall, in that case, you have to play around with the width of the MOS. Sir, okay. is uh, it wrong to explain it in terms of current timing? Current, yeah, obviously. So uh, basically, it's a time constant, right? So based on the time constant, so you can uh, use the capacitor charging and discharging equations. Okay, the final voltage and the initial voltage um, equation. So the, basically, the charging and discharging equations of the uh, capacitor can be directly applied over here. for this first order equivalent system. So you are considering our system is a first order. So there is no other parasitic capacitance, which is not true. Inside MOSFETs, there are lots of parasitic capacitance. Also for all these connections, external connections, there are all parasitic coupling. Even input and output is having one parasitic capacitance. So assuming all those parasitics are absent, so this waveform is true. And in practice, you'll see there is a slight overshoot here and there is a slight undershoot here in practice. If you measure with oscilloscope, you'll find those overshoot undershoots. And those overshoot undershoot signals, that means it goes beyond a 1.8. So there is nothing more than 1.8 in this uh, circuit. But uh, during measurement under equilibrium or steady state, you will find that this is going slightly above 1.8 and it's coming slightly below zero. So from where that negative and those more than 1.8 voltages are coming. So that happens due to superposition of charge uh, due to those practical stray capacitance or parasitic capacitances, uh, which are unavoidable. You must have, uh, you must uh, get those capacitances in a MOSFET circuit. And also not just within MOSFET, but also at the global level so while doing all these connections 
Is it uh, answered or you want uh, you want you are asking something else? No, sir. It is answered. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. So I'll uh, stop this. Uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, now I request Path uh, to start with the common source amplifier. Uh, active. Uh, like the, do you want me to share? One doubt. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Doubt. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Uh, in the previous experiment, um, like the KP value used was around 0 0.04 for the NMOS model, and for that mm -hmm. the gain was like 18 dB or something like that. But um, like mm -hmm. if you use like in like other in like previous models like model files then then the kp value for that for those models is naturally not that high so we are getting low low values of gain so um do mm -hmm. we use your kp values or do we include or do we like use like other like inbuilt oh. models okay so you can is, use either of those two actually so that's I, in this lab experiment i am not keeping any restriction in practical cases we use uh, pdks which is process development kits uh, supplied by the uh, manufacturer or the fabricators, okay. So like TSMC and other companies who fabricate, so they provide the values of KP in their model file. So whatever the model file is saying, you can adopt that, or you can select anything of your own. And obviously, the gain will change, and other parameters will change based on your selection of uh, KP, mu of uh, mu n, c ox, and other parameters. So it, uh, I will give you full marks for that. No problem. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, part. Uh, I'm sharing your video. Let's see. Is this the video? Yes, sir. Um, I'll run the video and uh, part. You can uh, keep on. Uh, tell me when when to stop and then we. You can yes, sir. Explain. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, sir, one second, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, I, I, I sent you another video yesterday. Have you checked that? Yeah, yesterday. Let me. Oh, yesterday you have sent another video. Yes, sir. That's why I was. Uh, I can explain this also, but sir, there are a few points I missed in this video that I covered in that. Video. Yeah, exactly. I saw. I checked this video. Maybe I missed it. Uh, let me check. Uh, this one. Yes, sir. Yesterday only I sent you. Um, yes. No, sir. Yeah. I think these are the yesterday around six seven p.m. in the evening. I sent you the video. Maybe I have not received because my mailbox is almost full, so I have to clean it. Yes, up. sir. That's why. That's why I mailed you today. About the same thing. Okay. So I need to clean up. I don't. I'm not finding time. So, anyways, uh, what to do? So, do you want to proceed with the older video and yes, then sir, later I give me the... uh, but, but, sir, if you, you can share the the new video with the students, so I have mentioned few more points in that video. That's all. Okay. So, why don't you uh, orally mention those points in this video yes, along with the old video, and uh, afterward I'll clean up my mailbox. You send me the again the video that you were trying to send yesterday. I'll upload them. Upload that for the students. Okay, sir. Fine. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the typical circuit for common source amplifier with active load. So what is an active load? You can see in this circuit, I have, I have you in previous circuit we were using resistive load for the amplifier. So uh, you can also explain why you have ignored the biasing and how you are actually compensating by using this thing. So part you can say that why you are able to replace this and uh, how you are going to adjust the parameter, some introduction. introduction. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Huh. Yeah. So I was unable to hear you. Sir, I was muted by someone. I thought. I think. Uh, let me check the settings. No, sir, no, I, no. 
okay uh, you can introduce this circuit i was introducing but someone muted me i think okay, oh so uh, let me check okay uh, part uh, just a moment i will check the permissions um just a moment i'm setting the permissions Uh, uh just a moment uh, still Can you speak up a little, little yes. bit? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I will start. Yeah. So this is a common source amplifier with active load. So instead of the resistive load in the previous circuit, uh, we are using an active load in the circuit. Active load is basically a current source. Uh, in this case, I am using a PMOS and saturation. Otherwise, you can use a current mirror also. So this will act as a load for this amplifier. See, I have biased this PMOS and saturation region, but if you do the AC equivalent circuit, you will find that gate and source both are shorted. So gate to source connected MOSFET will work as a load in uh, AC equivalent circuit and equivalent resistance will be RDS, small RDS. Okay, so this is the load for my circuit. One thing you need to keep in mind that, uh, say, I have not taken, I have not uh, uh, changed the values for KP or VTH for these parameters, which default values are there. So you can see the VGS value for NMOS and VSG value for PMOS both are same. So if when you make a circuit using this active load, just remember that the current through the NMOS and PMOS should be same. Otherwise, uh, see the NMOS and PMOS both should be in saturation region of operation. So if you fluctuate with the values, you have to calculate the, see the source and gate VS, VSG value for PMOS or the same saturation current. Otherwise, your gain will reduce drastically. So this is, sir, I think this is fine. I have given the same VSG and VGS value for the circuit and further you will see the characteristics of source. Thank 
Uh, you can see now. Yes, sir. So I have said the DC offset is 0.65, which is VGS for this circuit, VGS for the MOSFET. The amplitude is I have given similarly like one milli volt, like the previous circuit. The frequency I have taken is one kilohertz. This is the source, and first we will go for the transient analysis and then the AC analysis. Okay. So uh, you can explain slightly why you have chosen uh, DC offset voltage. For yes, biasing, because we need to first we need to operate the transistor in saturation region of operation, right? If we I don't choose a DC value, so the AC amplitude, uh, it uh, there is a threshold value for this NMOS, right? So if there is no DC offset, the transistor will never go into the saturation region. It will be in offset off region only. Okay. DC offset is typically the VGS value for that transistor. Yes, they stopped. Yeah. See? Yes, so this is the output for the circuit. Uh, you can see that uh, there is uh, the amplitude, input amplitude was 1 millivolt sine wave. The output is uh, varying from some 0.7 volt to 1.1 volt I've, I've checked it and uh, so that gain is high quite high gain and the 180 degree out of phase which was required we know that for common source simplifier the output is 180 degree out of phase for input right so yeah this is the simple transient analysis for the circuit yes sir fine Um, yeah, you can say. Yes, sir. This is the this is the input for the circuit, and before that, you saw the output. The see, you can see the input is varying from six fifty point one millivolt in like six fourteen input. So the input amplitude is very less compared to the output amplitude. And uh, I think in pre further, you can see both of them together in this video. But sir, I think the point is clear. We can go forward, and when you share the video, these things are mentioned clearly in that. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the, if, if someone, yes, sir. Someone asked that uh, can we change that uh, AC amplitude from one to one milli or anything we want? But sir, I have checked that that if we change that uh, AC amplitude, then the gain is getting affected. So uh, there is there is I think the, we need to change the output command for that. So uh, right now I have done with AC amplitude one only. And uh, further we can check uh, the but the amplitude is getting oh, gain is getting reduced if we in the AC amplitude yeah. Hmm. So there might be some issues with LT Spice also because LT Spice is not a very professional and accurate software. It is a, usually it's easy to use but lightweight software. So Cadence will tell you the final answer to this question. So you, if you want to check like this only, you can use AC amplitude as one. You can change yeah. other other values if you want to check other things. Yes, I have just changed the source. Yeah. DC offset should be there to maintain that. Yeah, this is for AC analysis. I've changed. You, I think you all remember the previous video. Almost same setting. Just. You have to fix the start and stop frequency and points per decade. Yeah, you can say now. Yes, just need to click on that output. You can see there's a quite high gain, but the but uh, this bandwidth is uh, quite low, not very high bandwidth for the circuit. So uh, this is like uh, this was a. You, this circuit needs some improvement uh, to get the high bandwidth. Uh, this in this video, I think I have not done that. But if the video you will get the, the video with server share with you. You can see the other things 
you can make other things to get the higher bandwidth. You can do other things. Okay. So this circuit, similarly like the previous video, you can calculate the 3 dB frequency for this amplifier. You can say that there is no lower cutoff because in the previous circuit there was a blocking capacitor at input end. In this circuit, I have not used that because of that there was a, a lower lower cutoff also 3 dB cutoff also. But in the circuit, there is no lower 3 dB cutoff. Only at when you increase the frequency higher, you'll get a 3 dB when 3 dB frequency. Okay, thank you. In a similar way, I calculated the 3 dB frequency here also, just like the previous video. Yeah. You can explain that? Yes, sir. The 3 dB frequency is similar to the frequency at which the gain reduced to 3 dB by your maximum value, maximum gain value. And uh, just by like, just like clicking on this, like say VN003, you can get this window and you can move the cursor along and get the frequency and magnitude at that point. Okay. Uh, one thing which is not mentioned in this video is what is the advantage of using uh, active load over resistive load? So, first you need know that. Uh, that Registers they take a high area, so if you use the register first, you they they will consume more area, and secondly, the if you use a register, there will be a drop across that register, so your output voltage swing will reduce. So you get a let. Uh, so if we are using a register at output, there will be a drop across this register, so the output voltage swing it will get reduced and it will get affected because of the register. So these are the two advantages. And I think, sir, if we can, if you can mention some more advantages, but I can think of these two only. Yeah, so you're right, actually. So space is the main advantage uh, for using the active load. Basically, the upper resistor is replaced by a transistor. And also, uh, by uh, if you need a programmable gain, for example, if you look at the schematic, uh, yeah. So if you need a programmable gain, uh, in that case, you can change this biasing voltage or if you need a fixed gain, just set the WAYL of the PMOS transistor and put it in a diode connected mode. In diode connected means the gate is connected to drain, okay, for PMOS. Um, so this uh, either diode connected mode will give you fixed uh, resistance or fixed equivalent resistance, but uh, fixed gain that will give you fixed gain. But in addition, if you need a programmable gain, you can apply a different biasing voltages so uh, based on the biasing voltages, your R on of this particular uh, MOSFET, the upper MOSFET can be different. So that means you can adjust the resistance. So in, in uh, that means you can adjust the uh, gain of your uh, amplifier because gain, uh, gain of this kind of amplifier or common source amplifier is minus GM into RD. So that is the simplest uh, equation. So GM is the transconductance over here and RD is the drain resistance. So instead of drain resistance, uh, the R on of this MOS, PMOS is your RD. Now, uh, in terms of voltage drop, I think part you were slightly wrong uh, because yes, uh, the voltage drop, uh, so whatever is the RD or in simple fixed resistor, voltage drop will always be there. Okay, so voltage drop is always there and if there is a voltage drop, so it's a KVL loop. Uh, so this V2, whatever voltage for V2, which is VDD actually. So VDD minus ID into RD is the voltage drop. Okay, now whatever, instead of RD, this is R on of a PMOS. So again, there will be voltage drop. So there is no escape from that. But only thing is that in terms of size, there is a huge advantage because it is much smaller in size. In terms of programmability, by changing the gate um, uh, voltage, uh, basically gate to source voltage, that's another huge advantage. So you can make a programmable gain amplifier very easily uh, by using active load uh, circuit for common source amplifier. Yeah. 
and uh, again uh, so in terms of match so uh, there is another point uh, which is uh, the temperature coefficient uh, because if you use a simple resistor so if you fabricate on chip resistor that will take lot of space that is one thing but if this apart from that the resistor material if you use a fixed resistor whether on chip or off chip that will have a different temperature coefficient okay so typically uh, those resistors are made of carbon flame or some sort of metal flame um, so really with uh, basically if it is a semiconductor chip based resistor then it's some with some doping concentration difference in the uh, in the silicon area but the point is the temperature coefficient is the main issue another important issue because if there is a increase in temperature the value of resistance change for this resistor will be different than the value of the parameter change which is r on of the lower transistor will be different so as a result uh, so your gain is subject to ambient temperature whereas if you use a mosfet then uh, they are on the same substrate similar uh, basically uh, material concentration approximately similar material so that is why if temperature increases or decreases so it's a ratio metric device so the ratio of the upper resistance and the lower resistance actually gets cancelled out so overall the gain doesn't have that uh, very large drift due to change in ambient temperature so these are other advantages okay uh, so we will uh, yeah yeah so part did you cover any other point in your uh, second view uh, no sir these are the these are the points one thing sir i changed these values wl values for the in that video so okay. there is the drop there the see the gain in that is some, typically 42 or 42 dBs, something like that and uh, if i change the wl values the reason of operation was just for this uh, uh, transistor was changed so the gain was dropped drastically in that video you can see that in that video i think the, the reason was uh, the reason of operation was changing for the transistors so from which region to what region so you are operating at saturation here so yes. was that a trial operation yes sir that was checked so that a pmos if sir it depends on what value you are changing so maybe the pmos was changing to triode region and that's why the uh, equal resistance was dropping so the gain was dropped by a large value i think Okay, so the point uh, basically uh, what Parth is saying that you have to keep track of the region of operation. So for common source amplifier, your lower resistor, uh, lower transistor, basically the NMOS must always be in saturation. But the PMOS, you have flexibility. You can keep it in either saturation, uh, preferably in saturation. But triode is also possible. But with triode, there is a if there is supply voltage variation, then you might get in different Q point. Okay, so this is the meaning that if you keep the upper, preferably you should keep M2 in uh, saturation mode, but in case if it is in triode due to your adjusted voltage over here, uh, then it will still work as a resistor. But the point is, if there is slight variation in supply voltage, let's say you are using a battery of um, 3 volt and from there you are using 1.8 after voltage regulator. So if your voltage regulator fails or if you have some change in the voltage uh, output, uh, I mean power supply voltage due to whatever reason there could be noise also. Uh, in that such in such case the R, R on of this upper transistor is going to change and if R on changes obviously your gain will fluctuate. So that means with power supply, your gain will fluctuate if you keep it in triad region. So preferably you keep it in saturation. And lower one must always be in saturation mode. Okay. Uh, any question from this circuit? So you have to do uh, transient simulation as well as uh, AC uh, simulation. Look at uh, the, another point uh, over here. So at startup, look at this waveform. So this is not a sine wave. It is. It looks like it's some noise before the circuit really starts with the sine wave signal. 
So uh, if you do any measurement at this point, uh, that is going to be ignored. Okay, so you must ignore the initial few millisecond time, preferably, and take somewhere from the in middle. So you can show uh, three or four uh, cycles. That itself is good enough. Uh, more is also enough, but don't show <laughs> thousands of uh, cycles over here. So that is also too cluttered. So make sure your sine wave is easily visible, it is readable, and so on. Okay, any question from this common source with active load? Seems uh, no question. Okay, so uh, now Arnab, uh, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll request Arnav to present. I'll let you. Uh, I'll give you the permission. You can share the screen and uh, you can start your video. Okay. So I'll give you the permission first. Okay, Arnav, I've shared, uh, I've given you the permission to share the screen. You can start sharing your screen. Okay. So Arnav will be discussing about the cadence equivalent design practices uh, for designing uh, common source amplifier, both uh, Resistive load as well as active load. Can I see the video? Yeah, I can uh, yes. see you screen. Yeah. Okay. So here we have uh, the two CS amplifiers. This is the resistive load one. Another one is the common active load one, diode connected active load. So I like to correct one thing here is that uh, a diode connected MOS is, is when you connect the gate and drain together, not the gate and source. If you connect the gate and source together, the MOS will be off forever. Off, yes. Okay. So these are the sources. Right. Must be gate and drain, obviously. And for the PMOS, the load side terminal is the drain terminal. Yes. So this is so these are the sources. We have the alias ground, VDD is the supply. Uh, we have VG. So this will be this VG will act as a biasing source as well as our AC input source. And this is the sine wave to test the transient characteristic. Now I'll show you what the VG has. The VG has a bias voltage of 600 millivolt. You can get it by register divider circuit, but in case of CMOS, we use separate band gap reference and from that band gap reference, we use current mirrors to get our desired voltage. So I've used a 600 millivolt bias voltage and an AC magnitude of one millivolt. This is used to test the gain and phase of this circuit. Uh, this is the sine wave which I have used. Uh, so I'll use it. this is 900. You can ignore. I've used 600 in that case also, and an amplitude of 100 millivolt and a uh, sine wave frequency of 100 kilohertz. This is just to test the transient characteristic. <laughs> Thank you. 
So we are applying this DC offset in order to keep the transistor in saturation. Transistor is to buy, to buy the lower end mass. So this is the AC window. What we'll do? We'll do AC analysis. So it's very simple. All you need to give is the frequency range. From what frequency you want to see the gain and phase of the circuit. So I've taken a large range just to be, just to show you what the gain and phase will be. So this is to simulate the circuit. Uh, you've heard me to press the run button. So we'll check both the V out and V out one. V out is the uh, one with the resistive load and V out one is the one with the active load. So he's doing check and save. So it's showing check some warning, but it's X. Uh, this the warning is because the V sign signal is not connected anywhere, right? It is open, so I'll only use it in transient simulation. That's the warning you're getting. Okay, these are the two signals. So this is for the active load. So our input. Sorry. Uh, you carefully look at the curves. They are quite light uh, in color. Uh, basically, this. Isn't good color contrast, but it's okay. So this is one is for that uh, active load. So I had my initial input signal had an AC magnitude of one volt, and I'm getting more than four volt. Uh, and for this uh, resistive load, I'm getting close to two. In case of CS amplifier and uh, TSMC or any other process, uh, the maximum gain you can get is close around 20 dB. So in order to get higher gain, you have to use an op amp or a telescopic amplifier. So there are limitations uh, of common source amplifier using single stage. Either you have to use multi-stage multi format or, or to use uh, op amp based of a kind of five pack circuit. So here, uh, Arnav is simulating both resistive load and active load at the same time. So simultaneously, both the circuits are running in the simulation. You can also uh, do the same thing in LT. Yeah. So in order to see the, there's a very special feature in Cadence. You can see the gain and phase. So what you need to do is to go to results, direct plot, AC gains and phase. AC gain and phase is this one. Results direct plot AC gain phase. So once you go there, what you need to do is click on your output wire and the input wire. So this is my output wire for resistive one, and the input is my VG. So I'll click on it and it will give me the gain and phase plot. So this lower one is my gain plot, and this is my phase plot. So you can measure the phase uh, phase margin, uh, the 3db frequency and everything so what i'll do i'll just see the phase drop here since this is a single pole system so the phase drop will not be much more than 90 degree you can see uh, there's a phase drop of close to 64 degree here so it's in one db let me I have to drag it down to yeah so once you drag it down to say close to zero db you can see that phase drop is 70 degrees. So in order to get this line, you need to press V on your graph. So only once you press V, there will be a vertical line. I'll do the similar thing for the active load. Uh, you, again, you have to go to results, direct plot, AC gain phase, and click on the output wire, then the input wire. Here also you can click V and see the AC gain and phase. The pole is located closer here because the MOS itself introduces some parasitic gap. So the pole location is 
closer to the origin. Now, so, so I'll show some properties like uh, in case of resistive load, uh, I need to use a wide MOS because I cannot uh, use a large uh, resistor because in MOS we cannot, uh, in uh, CMOS technology, we cannot have the resistor occupies a large area. So what we need to do, we need to increase the W, hence the GM will increase. As a result, our gain will be sufficient. So here we have to use a larger width of the MOS, uh, which can be a disadvantage. That's why in most cases, we, in case of CMOS design, we use a diode connected MOS as load. So if you look at this uh, diode connected one, I'm getting a higher gain with a much smaller width of the MOS. So in this case, the gain is given by GM of the lower, lower end MOS divided by GM of the P MOS. So this P MOS, if you look is in terms of AC resistance is give its resistance is one by GM. So my overall gain is GM N by GM P. Now, if I uh, increase the width of this one, my GM will increase, hence my gain will increase. So I need to keep this at a minimum width. Also, I have to consider the drop across this also. Hence, as the drop should not be more, otherwise the Q point will be, will uh, come down to a lower level. I will show you the current consumption in separately. So next, what we'll do, I'll just see the transient characteristics. So I'll just remove this VG and use V sign. So the V sign, the sinusoidal signal with a DC bias. Okay. Let's check and save this. And run the simulation. So. You can see the three signals together, V out one, V out, and now my V sign is the input signal. So if you look at it, so I had given an amplitude of 100 millivolts, so the peak to peak so will be 200. Waves, yeah, Arnav, uh, the waves are so lightly shown, so please uh, take your cursor and show them clearly. Okay, so this is the V sign one. Oh, just to hold on, I'll just uh, go to the uh, this thing. If I can, go. Oh, I'll just go to, the remote access if i can, oh, can you see this the remote accessing? yeah you can try yeah so I, I am in the remote window so this is this is the peak to peak and here i'm using 50 millivolts just to show you the peak to peak is 100 in this case the peak to peak is close to 200 so, so this is the input peak to peak is 100 and this is the peak to peak is 200 and this is for v, the diode connected MOS. And this current, so just wait a minute. So just to show you the current consumption, I have clicked on this node. So the total current consumption for the active case. So I'm just burning, you can see, an average current of only 40 microwatts to get a gain of four times. Just 40 microampere and I'm just burning. And these are the gains. This is my input signal. And this is my active load output. This is the resistive load output. So if you have any doubt, I have the screen ready with me. I can run other, change some parameters and show you. Uh, questions? Uh, can you go back to the graph? Sorry? Can you uh, go back to the graph for a second, like the four graphs? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. This one. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the top one is... Uh, the top one is for the resistive one. So oh, this is my... This one is my input signal. This one is my output for the resistive one. See, there will be a DC bias because uh, it will be on top of a DC signal in between the resistor and the MOS. You just need to 
check the peak to peak yeah what was your doubt and the lower two signals are like uh, we... uh, this is for the risk active uh, load output and this one i am just showing you the current so the current across this tra transistor i'm just showing you for the sake of showing you that if you use an active uh, diode you can design an amplifier with a very low amount of current consumption and it's 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 like deviating from the sign characteristics the the v also right the output uh, the white yeah. dot so this it is like this is much input basically right sorry the input the input is too high and therefore it is going out yeah that is the... if you reduce the input amplitude it will give you a proper signal or you can uh, just uh, change the q point just uh, adjust the sizing of these two so that this is at 0.9 volt midpoint of 1.8 and 0 so then you can have that maximum maximum swing, swing yeah. yes the compliance will be higher or not possibly your uh, nmos is going out of uh, saturation that's why you are getting those kind of flattish thing on the bottom side of yeah, white uh, yeah maybe so or you can add an offset to the input or reduce the input voltage yeah i can try that just hold on. so there are different ways to combat such problems so either you have to add some offset voltage uh, along with the sine wave such that it stays always in the active region. So the Q point should never leave that uh, saturation region, I mean. Or change the sizing also will do the same because transconductance will be changed. So as a result, gain will be changed. Yeah, see now the, if I just change the bias current, uh, the sine wave output is is now properly sinusoidal output uh, you can see there is a phase difference right between the input and the output so i just made the uh, bias uh, the dc voltage from 600 millivolt to 520 millivolt mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is how actually we do optimize our circuits to make sure that it will work correctly in real scenario. So, and uh, Arnav, can you please explain why the current is also sine wave like? Current is? Yeah, current is also somewhat following the yeah, sine so, wave. Yeah, so there is a DC current and there is an AC signal. To it so when the signal this voltage is rising the current is controlled by this nmos right this acts as a register this, this does not control any current so when the input signal rises at this node the current will increase and the input signal Absolutely. falls yeah. the current will decrease that's what is happening so there is a there is a see if you look at it there's an static there's eight uh, microamp on top of it there's a second sign so if you do a dc analysis it will give you only uh, close to 10 micro kind of thing. Yeah, good. So, so since we cannot use, we do not use resistors in uh, CMOS, so, so as Sir had told that uh, we use some band cap, something for uh, band cap biasing. So, so sir for our simulations also we should not use any resistors and wherever biasing is applied we apply a voltage source no in case of biasing you are using a voltage source we are using only voltage source we are not using any reference the reference itself is a circuit uh, no, uh, sir, I, I I don't know, this question is about PMOS actually so oh, can PMOS. we use the voltage okay. source that what you we see there are two ways you can either give a bias voltage to this PMOS and bias this branch. If you bias any of this, the branch will have the same current, right? It's a, the current is flowing from this node to this, the ground. Now I can either bias this PMOS or you can bias this NMOS. But when you bias this PMOS, you have to use a, just a DC voltage. Your sinusoidal will be here. Otherwise, if you are doing a CS amplifier, with load as NMOS and input as PMOS, what you will do, you'll connect this 
from this gate and drain this will act as your load and you will apply your bias and your signal at the pmos so is it clear you can have cs amplifier both ways you can have the input as the nmos as well as the pmos and other one will act as your load yes sir uh, sir, sir that that was fine uh, sir i wanted to ask for simulations that we would do now or for future so mm -hmm. sir we as you have done to use a uh, voltage so for, yeah, for now for this, uh, yeah you can use a voltage source for yes. simulation purpose for this flow code yes sir sir yeah, yeah. Uh, sir in this uh, is there any way means is the lambda parameter already set or we have the ability to set it as well no no you don't have any you only you have the control over width length and the biasing voltage the rest of it is set by the foundry okay uh, so there are two ways to look uh, at your question so lambda there is something with layout there is a lambda rule and there is a lambda ch channel and modulation parameter lambda okay so which lambda are you talking about okay so the channel length one okay so the channel, channel length modulation parameter is already taken care in the model file in the background because this is tsmc uh, 180 nanometer pdk so this is much more formal model which is available and much more accurate also uh, which is already loaded uh, in the background for cadence simulation sir uh, and also while you are plotting the uh, gain db versus phase and all uh, there was an option to plot uh, magnitude db and phase as well so what's the difference between them i'll be back in some yeah so gain db is gain is uh, your v out by v in okay so it's uh, 20 log v out by v in gain gain db and um, i think magnitude db you don't have a magnitude db db is a i think it's a ratio right you cannot have a single term to denote a decibel function you can either have a power db power out by power in 10 log v out by p in or 20 log v out by v in is it clear yes sir db itself is a ratio uh, denotes a ratio between two voltage Is there any other question? any other question okay um anup please look at the chat box someone is asking whether the input waveforms are the same or not so i think it was same right yeah the input signal is same for both one so it's a very old question oh old last question. week oh it's last week question oh sorry sorry i thought it's today's question okay 
or let's say 18 one year. Okay, any other question about uh, common source amplifiers? So again, cadence part, we'll ask you through Viva or some sort of other theoretical question, uh, whatever we'll be covering based on that only. So you have to, I'll upload uh, both the videos today and then uh, you have to study uh, and then we have to repeat the LT spice side, but cadence side, you just have to watch it and understand. Okay, in the next uh, week, uh, by next week, you have to upload uh, the common source amplifier, uh, both the side parts. And then uh, you have to, uh, then uh, next week we'll cover op-amp. And also we'll see if layout uh, time remains, we'll consider layout as well. Otherwise we'll consider layout as next to next week. So uh, essentially we have uh, two more class slots next week and the week afterwards for analog and then analog classes will stop. The, then the third week from now, Professor Vivek Dixit will start on the digital side. Okay, so on analog, as you know, there are four experiments. You have to fulfill the requirements for the full assignment submissions. And we will see what else uh, will be the marking point. As I said, the quiz will be one, Viva could be one. So we have, we had yet to decide that. Okay, uh, so any other question regarding submission or any other um, previous experiment? Uh Tomorrow we have to submit common source amplifier with resistive load, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. And for Sir, experiment okay? one, yeah. Yeah, tell me. Sir, is it okay if uh, I can ask doubts on first experiment now? Yes, sure. Uh, sir, actually, uh, you showed the simulation file. Uh, Regarding, you told that we shouldn't measure at the initial states because there is a transition which we may not know, we not be knowing the initial conditions. So, so I later change the delay factor as well. Mm -hmm. But in still some cases, when I change only the width of PMOS, uh, my fault time is also decreasing or increasing. And uh, in some cases, uh, if we increase width, the rise time is also increasing. So that may be due to some extra capacitance because once you increase the width of a transistor, it also adds to the parasitics inside the transistor. So maybe the model that you are using or the um, accuracy of the model matters. Maybe for that reason, you are getting such weird result. So Both which model are you using? That's the one default one. Default one, okay. So that is okay, but it may not be very accurate because as I said, uh, the, in professional PDKs, as you have seen in Cadence, the people fabricate the MOSFETs, they get those values verified over several hundred runs or thousands of runs. Okay, so they fabricate multiple MOSFETs and they keep on checking whether the parameters uh, are matching or not, like K, N, U, N, uh, C, OX and other parameters. Okay, so uh, that's why the PDKs are much more accurate as compared to uh, simplistic models. Yeah, but it is uh, okay for now. It's not necessary that you must be very, very accurate uh, with LT spice. And so in the previous experiment, we have yeah. with RL uh, capacitor CSH, which uh, has been set to 10 picofarad. If you increase it to uh, a few nanofarads, uh, you obviously see a shift uh, as in like uh, a delay. And then uh, you also observe that uh, that the gain has fallen. So mm -hmm. like I was reasoning that is it because like if you have a very large capacitor, the amplifier will not be able to charge it and discharge it in time or is that uh, and if you increase it, obviously if you increase it to one microfarad or something like that, then it uh, the gain becomes like negative. So yeah. the output waveform is actually smaller than the input waveform. So like, is that the reason? Because of, uh, you know, the, you can't charge the capacitor or uh, is it? That's one of the reasons. Definitely that's the dominating factor uh, because if you have a large capacitance, you need large uh, white MOSFETs also uh, to charge that up. So for a given the size uh, WIL for 
both upper or lower mosfets or any one of the mosfets so it will have only finite amount of resistance while it is in saturation mode so that resistance yeah. into capacitance is again coming down to the original point that i was making earlier today uh, the time constant so obviously if you have a large capacitance like nano or micro uh, so the transistor may not be able to charge up fully and from this fact uh, while uh, studying op amp you must have come across slew rate so the slew rate is the maximum rate of change in voltage uh, so uh, at the output of an op amp so the slew rate obviously that slew rate term is used in terms of op amp but it actually came from the drive signal uh, driving ability basically the, what is the output current driving ability or sinking ability or sourcing ability of a uh, transistorized uh, stage and the corresponding capacitance of the pin and the connections so if the capacitance is very large your slew rate is going to be smaller and vice versa right for a given sizing of a transistor so obviously uh, you have to make an optimal choice so what should be the range of capacitance that is acceptable as a load and also what should be the uh width and length of the transistor length obviously we cannot change for a given technology but width we can play around the other reason is uh, if you look at the ac small signal model the resistor and the capacitor they come in parallel if you increase the size of the capacitor the overall load resistance drops so that is another reason why your the gain drops So it's yeah, one by is. omega c, right? If we increase c, uh, so that one by omega c, the x c term drops, and your the R is in parallel with the capacitor. If you draw the small signal model, so the overall load resistance drops. So if your load resistance drops, your gain will automatically drop. Yeah, yeah. and also it depends on frequency of operation. Yeah. So the omega term. Yeah, that's why at uh, its bandwidth is also very less. It's only about six. Because the pole is pole is now the pole is R C the combination of R and C, so the pole will be closer to the origin. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you. Any other question? Okay. Uh, if you don't have any questions, so we'll stop the class over here itself. Uh, so please prepare yourself for the submission tomorrow uh, for the common source amplifier with resistive load. Okay. So I'll note down attendance for students. I'll stop recording.